Hi, I'm Rebecca from yarnandshy.com and this is the video tutorial for the Cabin Fever Slouch. The Cabin Fever Slouch is an easy level pattern written in American Standard terms. The finished size of this hat is 9 inches tall by 9 and 3 quarters inches wide when laid flat. So not super slouchy, just the right amount of slouch in the back. To complete this pattern, you're going to need a size H or 5 millimeter hook or whichever hook you need to meet gauge. Now the gauge for this pattern is measured on the first five rounds of the pattern itself. After you have completed five rounds of the pattern, you should be right at four inches. Now the H hook that I am using today is a Clover Amour. It's very affordable. You can find it at most large craft stores or you can order it online and I'll put a link to that down in the video description below. For the yarn, in the samples I used Stitch Studio by Nicole Earth Tones yarn. You can see that in these photos. It's this nice tweed yarn that comes in a lot of really nice bright colors. It is a little bit harder to see my stitches when using this tweedy yarn though. So for this video tutorial, I'm going to be using Yarn B Must Be Merino and I'm going to be using the colors khaki and white. This is a wool acrylic uh, nylon blend. But really any Aran weight yarn which is um, the heavier side of the number four medium weight yarn category is going to work. Just make sure you do your gauge check. So for color A, I am going to be using about 125 yards. And for color B, I'm going to be using about 75 yards. You're also going to need a yarn needle. And if you want to add a fur palm at the end, that is totally up to you. One last thing before we begin, please read the video description below if there have been any changes or error corrections to this pattern since the publishing of this video tutorial, they'll be listed in the video description under pattern updates. Let's get started. Okay, to start this pattern, we are going to begin with a magic circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm holding the end tail like this, putting it across my fingers, two fingers. I'm going to wrap it around to form an X and I'm going to use my thumb to hold that in place. Reach my hook through the loop and grab the working end of the yarn, which is coming out of the skein there. Pull it through and then I'm going to hold everything and pull that down. Now I have a more in-depth tutorial for the magic circle. If that's something that you have never done before, you can definitely check out my tutorial and I will link that below. We're going to make our magic circle and chain one. For round one, we're just going to make 10 half double crochets in our magic circle. So go ahead and make 10 half double crochets around that circle. Okay, that was my tenth half double crochet and now I'm going to take my end tail here and pull that. You don't have to pull it super tight yet because you will pull it tight again when you go to weave in this end. Just pull it tight so everything goes together there and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet of the round. So go ahead and complete your slip stitch into that first stitch. Now I should say if you are newer or you aren't comfortable with recognizing which stitches are your first and last of the round then you might want to consider using a stitch marker. Um, when I use a stitch marker I like to just use a bobby pin because it goes in really easily and I have a million of them laying around my house. So um, that's a little tip for you if you want to mark the first and last stitches of your rounds that's totally up to you. Okay so what we're gonna do now is since this is a striped hat we are going to bring in our second color, color B, which is in this case white. And I'm going to show you how I do my color changes and I'm going to teach you how to uh, carry the yarn up the inside of the hat so that we don't have to fasten off at every single color change. Okay, so this is um, not the most 
technically correct way to change yarn colors in the round but it's my favorite way to do it and I think it um, it looks nice and clean so if you have a way that you prefer you go ahead and do your way otherwise you're welcome to use this way so what I do I've already um, completed my join here and I'm going to wrap yarn B around the hook and pull it through and then I am going to pull the tail from yarn A really tight down into that stitch so that it kind of disappears into the stitch below it. And then pull this and chain one. Okay, so this is round two. We just attached color B. I'm still hanging on to all those yarn tails back there so that this doesn't come loose. And we have switched to color B. We are not going to fasten off color A. We've chained one and now we're going to turn. Okay, now in the third loops, we are going to put two half double crochets in each stitch around. Now let me show you how to know where we start. Okay, so when you look at these loops, this is the loop that was created by the chain one. If you follow it down, the next loop, that set of loops right there, that is the set of loops that was created when we did our slip stitch to join. So we are not counting that as a stitch either. So your first stitch is going to go right here into this, um, this stitch right here. So um, loops created by the chain one, loops created by the slip stitch, loops created by the, the final stitch of the previous round, which is where we're going to start. And when we would normally put our hook into the um, underneath the top loops, we are actually going to find the third loop of this stitch. And let me show you quickly how to do it. To find the third loop when you are turning your work, you locate the top two loops, back loop, front loop, and then you turn it towards you, and this loop right under here, that's right underneath the front loop, that is your third loop, okay? So our instructions tell us in third loops, two half double crochets in each stitch around. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to complete a half double crochet going in from the bottom of that third loop and through. Complete your half double crochet right there. Now this is going to start to come a little bit loose where we attached that color. That's okay, we will pull it tight later. Okay, so go ahead and, and complete a second half double crochet in that exact same spot because we're putting two in each stitch around. Alright, so let's move to the next third loop. Complete two half double crochet stitches. At the end of this round, you should have 20 total stitches. So go ahead, go all the way around in the third loop. Okay, I'm on my last one here, and that last third loop is a little bit hard to see, so you have to kind of tuck your hook into there to get to it. Complete that. Now we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet of the round and we are going to make sure that the tail from color A is in front of the join stitch, okay? So we have, this is the tail from our magic circle. We're going to ignore that for now. So what we're looking for um, is the other tail from color A, the working tail, which is still attached to our skein over there. We want to make sure that this is in front when we join. If it's back here, then the seam is going to end up on the outside of the hat and we don't want that. So make sure that your working tail from the color that you're not using is in front. Okay, and then go ahead and join with a slip stitch like so. Okay. All right, moving on to round three, we are going to switch back to color A, chain one, and turn. So grab your working tail from color A, and what you're going to do now is you're just going to pull it through that loop from color B, and then you're going to take the working tail from color B and pull it down real tight, okay? and then use your fingers to hold it down back there, chain one, turn your work. 
Okay, and now we are going to, in third loops throughout, and this entire pattern, um, the body of the hat, the whole thing is worked in the third loops. We're going to do two half double crochets in the first stitch and one half double crochet in the next stitch, and we're going to repeat that all the way around the hat. So this is just a very standard way of increasing a hat. Okay, so once again, these are the loops created from the chain one. These are the loops created from the slip stitch, and this is going to be our very first stitch of the round. Now don't get confused if you see this little bit of um, color B sticking out right here. That's not a full set of loops. That's just um, that part that we pulled the second color through, kind of peeking out there. So we'll pull it down so we can't see it anymore, okay? Still poking out a little bit there, but you can tell that's not a set of loops. So chain one, slip stitch, first stitch. Go ahead and half double crochet twice into that third loop. And then in the next stitch we're just going to half double crochet once into the third loop. Okay, so it's going to be two, one, two, one, two, one all the way around the circle. So two half double crochets in the next, one half double crochet in the next two in the next, one in the next. Go ahead and do that all the way around. And when you're done, you should have 30 stitches. Okay, I just completed my 30th stitch there and I need to join with a slip stitch to the top of the, um, the first stitch of the round. And this time we're going to join making sure that the tail from color B, which is right here, is behind the join stitch. So I'm going to put that behind and then I'm going to join with my slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet of that round. And as you can see if I turn it over here, it's a little bit hard to see it yet, but you've got your seam um, carried up colors starting to go up the inside of the hat and they are not showing on the side. Now, um, you do still have your starting tail from your color um, B, which is on the right side of the hat right now, and all we're going to do is take a yarn needle and we're going to stick that through so that it comes out the back, and then I'm also going to take a minute and just weave in both of my starting tails to get them out of the way. So you can go ahead and take a moment to do that because when you're working with two colors and you're switching back and forth, having these extra couple of ends in the way just makes it that much more complicated. So you're not cutting anything right now. Don't cut any of your yarn, but your two loose ends that are not attached to a skein, that is what you can go ahead and uh, weave in. So just to clarify, for color B, I'm just going to, I wove it through my yarn needle, I'm just going to stick it right through and now it's coming out on the inside of the hat and I can go ahead and weave in these ends. Okay, so go ahead and do that real quick. My uh, starting tails are woven in and I'm going to go ahead and just cut them off. And please make sure that you're not cutting off a working end of yarn, only your ends that are not attached to the skein right now. Okay, so we've simplified a little bit. Now we only have these two colors coming out and that's going to make things a little bit easier to deal with. So from this point on, every single time we join, we're going to make sure that the yarn is always carried up on the same side of the fabric. Okay, so if you already know how to do a standard circle increase and you feel comfortable reading a pattern, you don't really have to stick with me at this point because I am going to go ahead and um, take you th through every single round of the increase, which is eight rounds. So if you are already comfortable with what you're doing, you understand what I mean about keeping the yarn um, carried up on the same side of the hat, you can go ahead and... Um, turn this video tutorial off and maybe come back for the body of the hat or for um, the band when we start the ribbing. But if you do need the extra help, go ahead and reinsert your hook and stick with me here. So we are moving on now to round four. We're gonna switch back to color B, which is behind our work here. So we're just gonna take it and pull it through and then pull down that color A real tight chain one and turn. And we are going to half double crochet in the first um, stitch twice, 
third loops twice and once for each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. And at this point, you should have a good idea of where your first stitch is. This is the chain one. This is the slip stitch. This is your first stitch. And here is the third loop from that stitch. So half double crochet twice in that first one. And then once in the next, whoops, and once in the next, and then again twice in the next, and then once in the next, and once in the next. So do that pattern all the way around, two, one, one. Okay, so I just finished round four and I'm going to join and because my seam is, um, the yarn carried up is on the side that I'm looking at right now, I'm going to make sure that my um, tail from the color that I'm not using is going to stay on the same side. So it's going to be in front of the join stitch this time. And I'm going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet. Okay, round five, switch back to color A chain one, pull that down first, chain one, turn. We're going to do two half double crochets again in that first stitch and then we're going to do one half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So one, two, three. Okay, same pattern all the way around. Two in the next, and then one in each of the next three. One, two, three, and go ahead and complete that pattern all the way around. End of round five, we're going to join, and right now the working tail from the color that we're not using is on the front of the hat. So we want to make sure that that goes back, and then go ahead and join. with a slip stitch to the top of the first stitch of that round. That's round five. For round six, go ahead and change your color, pull that down, chain one and turn, two half double crochets in the first stitch, and then one half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So one, two, three, four, and we're going to continue that pattern all the way around to one, 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 one. Okay, so go ahead and complete that all the way around. To join round six, we're going to make sure that the working tail from the color that we aren't using is on the side with the yarn being carried up, which is facing us right now, so we'll make sure that that stays in the front there. And go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of that round. We've got two more rounds of increase to do before we start on the body of the hat. Okay, so for round seven, grab that color A again and switch to it. Pull that white down, chain one, and turn. We're going to put two half double crochets again in that same stitch, first stitch and then one half double crochet in each of the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and go ahead and complete that pattern all the way around. Two in the next, and one in each of the next five. To join round seven, we're going to make sure that color B is behind our join stitch. Let's tuck it back there and then go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first stitch of the round. And then we'll switch back to color B for round eight. Switch to color B, pull that down, 
chain one and turn. And for round eight, we're going to put two half double crochets into the third loop of that first stitch. And then one half double crochet in the third loop of each of the next uh, six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And continue that pattern all the way around. Two in the next and one in each of the next six. Okay, and to finish round eight, we're going to go ahead and do our join, keeping our other working tail here where the uh, carried up seam is. Join with a slip stitch. So this is the end of our increasing rounds and now what we're going to do for round nine is we're going to switch back to color A, pull that down tight, chain one and turn, and now we're just going to half double crochet still in the third loops one time in each stitch all the way around. At the end of round nine, we're going to join, and as always, making sure that the um, tail that we're not working with is on the side with the seam. So put that behind, go ahead and join. And for round 10, we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did. We're going to switch colors, chain one and turn, and half double crochet in the third loops of each stitch around, just one half double crochet in each stitch. Okay, so for round 10, go ahead and join, making sure that your other tail is on the right side. And I'm going to take you through one last round before I give you um, the series of repeats. And we're just going to change color, do the exact same thing. Chain one, turn your work, half double crochet in each third loop all the way around. So go ahead and finish that, and then I will give you the repeats for the rest of the body of the hat. Okay, so for the next 12 rounds, that's uh, rounds 12 through 23, you're going to go ahead and just keep going back and forth between your colors, um, half double crocheting in the third loops of each stitch around and joining, making sure, of course, that your uh, seam with the joins is being carried up on the same side. And um, so basically what you're doing is a repeat of rounds 10 and 11, and you're just going to go back and forth between them until you have a grand total on your hat of 23 rounds. And after that, we'll come back together and work on the band of the hat, which is the ribbing. All right, so I have finished all of my rounds for the body of the hat, and I just wanted to point something out real quick. Um, this is the first time that I have used the Must Be Merino Aran yarn. And because it um, is an Aran yarn, I wasn't too concerned about it being um, much thinner or thicker than the original yarn that I had used on this is um, my original sample hat here. Um, and so I just went with it and it turns out it is a little bit thinner and the reason that I know that is because um, when I finished 23 rows I was not to the height that I needed to be um, the height that this hat was at at the end of 23 rows so I went ahead and I added four more rounds sorry I added four more rounds to this hat to make it about seven inches tall. That's where you want to be at this point to get a nine inch tall hat. In the end, you're gonna to wanna to be to about seven inches. So go ahead and measure, make sure you're there. 
and if you're not you can go ahead and add a couple more rounds however many you need to get to that point and this is a really good lesson in doing a gauge check which I did not do with this particular yarn um, because I knew that even if it wasn't exact I would um, be able to kind of fake it on screen as long as I didn't measure it in front of you but then I thought no this is a really good learning moment so we're actually going to talk about this I didn't do a gauge check. I chose the same size yarn as my original sample as the one that the pattern called for, an Aran sized thickness of yarn. And I used the exact same hook that I used to create this sample hat. And my hat still turned out significantly shorter and a little bit um, less wide as well. So that's a really good lesson for you that it doesn't matter if you use um, you know, the recommended yarn or the exact same hook. Um, everybody's tensions are different and there are even differences between yarns that seem like they should be exactly the same. So that's why if I had done a gauge check with this yarn, um, I would have probably upped my hook size at least half a millimeter possibly a whole millimeter and um, it would just depend on how the gauge check turned out so there's a little lesson in the importance of checking your gauge now for this hat I just adjusted by adding a couple of extra rounds and we're just gonna say no big deal all right so whatever um, number of rounds you have done to get to seven inches now we're going to go ahead and make the band of the hat and we're going to be working in vertical rows now attaching the band of the hat as we go with slip stitches so what we're going to do and i have fastened off um, color b because i don't need it anymore so we're just going to get that out of the way there's no sense in having it crowding our table here and what i'm going to do is reinsert my hook. This is exactly where my hook was at the end of the final round. We're going to call it round 23 even though I actually have 27 rounds. We're just going to call this 23 because that's um, if you're following the pattern according to the gauge check you should have 23 rounds as well. Alright so for row 1 of the ribbing we're going to start by chaining 9. We're going to chain this rather tightly. Don't go super loose. Okay, so that's nine chains. And what we're going to do now is single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So this, the loops on your hook do not count. So this is the first chain and this is the second chain. And I'm just going to single crochet into the back loop of that chain. Let me zoom in a bit for us here. I'm going to single crochet into the back loop of that chain and in each remaining chain still in the back loops here just because it's easier single crocheting in each remaining chain okay so when you're done with this little row you should have a total of eight single crochets Okay, so what we've got now is this barely attached, hanging by a thread, um, vertical row. And it should have eight single crochet stitches in it. Now, if you have done this ribbing technique with me before on other patterns, everything is the same except we're going to be working into the third loop of our stitches around. And I don't believe I've ever done this with a pattern before. So that's the only change. So if you already know how to do this, you probably don't need to watch this part of the tutorial. For those of you who have not done this part, it's a really cool technique and you'll be able to use it with a lot of other patterns as well. So, okay. We have single crocheted in the second chain from the hook and in each remaining chain. And now we're going to slip stitch into the third loop of the first half double crochet from round 23. Okay, that's the stitch on which our chain nine was built. So that is this stitch right here. This was a half double crochet stitch. So what we're gonna do, because we did not turn our work, the third loop of this half double crochet stitch right here 
isn't going to be found in the front anymore. It's going to be found in the back because we didn't turn our work this time. So these are the top loops of this first stitch. Front loop, back loop, and to find the third loop, front loop, back loop, we're going to turn it and there it is right there. So we're going to go in and slip stitch into that stitch, okay? We're also going to slip stitch into the next third loop. So this is the next stitch, front loop, back loop, third loop, slip stitch, okay? So we have eight single crochets plus two slip stitches along what we are calling round 23. For row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. We're going to skip over the two slip stitches that we just did and single crochet in the back loops of each of the first seven stitches of the ribbing. So here's how to figure out exactly where to start. Okay, we have, let's see if I can get this pointed the right way. We have the loops created by the chain one. The loops on your hook don't count, okay? So this is the first set of loops that we can see. That's the loop from the chain one. And then these next two are from the slip stitches that we created. So we know that we're skipping over those and we're going to start in the next stitch, which is this one right here, okay? Chain one, slip stitch, slip stitch, first stitch of the row. And we are single crocheting, sorry, in the back loop only of that stitch in each of the first seven stitches. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you can barely see it here, but we do have one stitch remaining. We're going to single crochet in both loops, both top loops of that last stitch. Okay, and as you can see, we're starting to see some ribbing. And so we're just going to repeat that process again for row three, chain one, and turn your work. We're going to single crochet in the first stitch through both loops. Every time we do the stitch on the edge of the hat, it's going to be under both loops, and then all of the other stitches along that row are going to be in the back loops. So now we single crochet in the back loops of each of the remaining seven stitches. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now again we should have eight total single crochets along this line. And to attach it to the bottom of the hat, we're going to slip stitch into the third loop of each of the next two stitches along round 23, okay? So as you can see, this is the third loop from this stitch and it's already been worked into. You can see how it's been pulled up. So we know that was the last one we worked into. So we're going to go to the next one. These are the top loops. S going to slip stitch into the third loop from that next open stitch. One, and then we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch into the next one. We always slip stitch into the next two available third loops, okay? All right, so for row four, chain one, turn your work again, and again, we're gonna skip over those two slip stitches that we just made. So, loops from the chain one we just did, loops from the two slip stitches, and this is our first 
set of loops, first stitch of the row, and we're going to single crochet into the back loop of that one, and the next six, because the instructions tell us to single crochet into the back loops of each of the first seven. So that's seven total. We have one stitch remaining, and we're going to single crochet into both loops of that stitch. And you can see this ribbing really forming. It's going to be so pretty at the end. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and repeat rows three and four all the way around the edge of the hat until you get back to this side, and then we will use our finishing tail to seam it together, the gap that's going to be right here between the first row and the last row. There will be a gap, so we'll use our finishing tail to seam that up, and then we'll be just about done. So this is my finished hat, almost finished. We just have to use our end to um, weave this together to hold it shut. And as you can see, I've already fastened off my yarn from the skein. It's no longer attached. I'm going to pull that through so that I can use this to sew the gap together. So I'm just going to go ahead and weave it through my yarn needle and I have my hat right side out right now. So this is the seam that shows. This is the seam that will be on the inside with the yarn being carried up. So with your hat right side out, go ahead and weave that end through your yarn needle. And what you're going to do is hold these ends together And starting in this very first stitch right here, we're going to go through both loops with our yarn needle. And then through the bump from the chain of the first one on the other side and pull that nice and tight. And then holding this together, we're now going to be working in the um, back loop on this side. So go ahead and insert your yarn needle into the back loop of the next stitch and straight across. Pull it nice and tight. And then through the back loop, straight across, through the back loop, straight across. all the way down that was my final stitch but there is still a little bit of a hole here where we were doing our slip stitches so I'm just gonna kinda grab some yarn and mimic what I've been doing one more time okay so that is our seam and I'm going to poke the yarn now right where it's coming out I'm gonna poke it back in and through to the other side so that I can weave in my ends now okay so let me go ahead and weave this in quick what I like to do when I weave in my ends is I go through five six stitches and then I come back right through the exact same stitches again I'm pulling it taut, but I'm not pulling it super tight here, and I like to kind of stretch it out after each pass. And then I make one more pass through those same stitches again, and that is going to hold pretty secure. Go ahead and cut. And if you haven't yet, you can weave in all of the rest of the ends of your hat. So this is my seam, which makes it the back of the hat. Flip it over and you have a nice, beautiful striped ribbed hat. And the last step here, which is totally optional, would be to attach a fur palm, just like the one I have here on my sample hat. Thanks for following along with this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it, that you learned something new, and that you ended up with a hat that you love. 
Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more video tutorials and check out my blog for lots of easy modern patterns. See you next time.